Let us pray. Dear Father, as we come into your awesome presence, still our minds and thoughts, let us rest with you as we ask you for forgiveness. We try so hard to be like you, then when we get caught up in our busy day, help us to stop and think, what would you do? We are sorry for all we have done wrong and ask you to forgive our sins and pray to be more Christ-like in our actions and words and deeds, to put you first in our lives and show love and care for each other. Wash us clean with your loving heart, Father, as we learn from you to forgive others. Father, we give you all honour, glory and praise and thank you for all the good things in our lives. Your unconditional love for each one of us knows no bounds. Great is your faithfulness to us. Thank you, Father, that we do not have to rely on our own abilities. We just need to let go and let you into our hearts and trust you with your plans and purposes for each one of us. Your grace and mercy is never ending. Nothing compares to your power and glory. Your love and truth is all we need. Hold us close this coming week. You are our God, our Father, and our friend. This prayer we ask in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. And now let us share in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm now going to put on my school teacher hat, but I shan't be giving you a maths lesson. But the first question I'm going to ask you is the number one. How many colours are there in a rainbow? Seven straight away. Now then, I wonder how you knew so quickly that it was seven, Diane. You just sing a song. Um, I, ex I think I'd be right in saying, would I not, that several of you have a way of remembering the sequence. Who knows a way of remembering the sequence of the seven colours? Can we have the first slide, please? This is one that I was taught a long, long while ago. Richard of York gained battle in vain. It's the mnemonic. It is a, um, a sentence to remember a sequence. So the colours of the rainbow are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And just to confirm that, slide two will show us those colours. Now then, here is one that you perhaps will never have seen before. Slide three, please, Rob. My very educated mother just served us noodles. I'll give you a clue. <laughs> ah, you know. Well, let me give a clue first, and I'll come to your... The clue would be sky, not the television, not the rainbow. And a devious clue would be to say, if we went back into the 1950s, you would have to really amend it by adding at the end 
the word perhaps. Is this fitting in with your? Very good. Alison, do explain what's going on. The planets in sequence. So M from my is Mars. V, Venus. E, Earth. M, Mercury. J, S, Saturn. U, Uranus. And N, Neptune. It's another mnemonic. And the P for perhaps would have been because in the 1950s, we had Pluto, which we seem to have lost. Now then, I'm now going to turn it round. That is a sentence to find a sequence. I now want to have a sequence to define a sentence. Is this too much for you on a Sunday morning? Uh, next slide, please. Here is a sequence to define a sentence. NASA stands for National Aeronautic and Space Administration, I think it is. I guess one or two of you might know other, these are called acronyms, I'm told. Any other acronyms that we can think of? ASAP? As soon as AWOL? P-I-N, pin? Ah, every, this is the music one from our musician in the uh, congregation. This is all giving you the notes. The flaps and the shafts. Right, the flaps and the shafts. That's getting a bit technical. Um, now then, PIN, of course, is personal identification number. About 30 years ago, I was suffering from depression. Quite suddenly, out of the blue, in the autumn. Not sure why. Um, had a few tests from the thyroid. Um, after a little bit of time, it was self-diagnosed, or <coughs> partly self-diagnosed, as SAD, another acronym which stands for Seasonal Affective Disorder. I was in a very anxious place, very worried. I had lots of sleepless nights. And during these sleepless nights, I devised some acronyms. Next and final slide, you'd be glad to know, is there. HOI. Any idea what that might have been an acronym for? Hang on in. I'm quite renowned on the tennis court of never giving up. Keeping going, even when it's Six love, six love, five love. Hang on in. And I used to share this. In fact, I shared it with um, a 95-year-old uh, lady, I think, at the time, who was herself depressed. It became a bit of a joke. Don't forget to hoi. Hoi, hang on in. And I think it did help her. The other one, um, Houdini, of course, the famous escapologist, um, when you're in a depressed state, as you might realize, uh, you probably know people or yourself, have, you don't want to bother. You want to do it now, get on with it. Hang on, using do it now idea. That was my Houdini acronym. Might be helpful. But the theme of today's service is do not be anxious. Do not be anxious. Uh, before I develop the theme, we're going to have some readings. But before the readings, uh, we're going to sing two songs. The second song is Father, I place into your hands the things that I can't do. And this takes me back to the 1990s 
when I was here at this church and I was with the youth fellowship, which I was helping to run, at Helenley House doing a song to praise evening. And we invited the residents to choose a song, hymn. And one lady, very disabled, chose this one because it gave her comfort that she could put, she couldn't care for her family, she put it into the Lord. Uh, but before that, we're going to sing my personal favourite, Faithful One, which starts very quietly and reflective and builds up and declares, you are my rock in times of trouble. Last week, Nick encouraged us to write down a character aspect of God that we thought was important to us. I wrote down, not the rock, he is always there. I dare say others last week did the same. Um, this song is quite a short one, so we should sing it, I think, twice or even three times. I'll leave it to our worship leader, Martin, over here to decide, faithful one.
Please sit as we have our two readings. The first reading this morning is from Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 to 34, which you will find in the Church Bible on page 6 in the New Testament, beginning at verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or what your body, what you, with your body what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven will be not much more to clothe you, you of little faith. Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who seek all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Amen. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 to 13, and this can be found on page 196 in the New Testament section of the Church Bible. I am reading from the Good News Bible. May you always be joyful in your union with the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Show a gentle attitude towards everyone. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. But in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. In conclusion, my brothers, fill your mind with those things that are good and that deserve praise things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honourable. Put into practice what you learnt and received from me, both from my words and from my actions. And the God who gives us peace will be with you. In my life in union with the Lord, it is a great joy to me that after so long a time, you once more had the chance of showing that you care for me. I don't mean that you had stopped caring for me. You just had no chance to show it. And I am not saying this because I feel neglected, for I have learned to be satisfied with what I have. I know what it is to be in need and what it is to have more than enough. I have learnt the secret so that anywhere, at any time, I am content, whether I am full or hungry, whether I have too much or too little. I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. Thanks be to God.
Before considering the readings we've just heard read, I'd like to talk briefly, if I may, about my own personal journey in faith these last few years. My depression recurred. I've got no doubt whatsoever that through the depression with God in control, I came to meet Chris over here. It was March 2019. Few of you know this, I think, but March 19, I was on a walk. Christian um, people from Leamington, Saturday morning walk around Stonely. Edward was in the group, and uh, I was feeling low. And I asked him directly, did he know of a lady who would perhaps be glad to spend time with me? Immediately, he thought of Chris. The next day I was here in this church. I sat somewhere where she is now. And uh, I met her over the hatch because that is where she tended to be after the service. And um, in due course, I joined Harmony as a way of um, being with her a bit um, before I got to know her. Monday nights, I was able to do that. And uh, our first date, it was Easter Saturday, about a month after we first met. Um, and everything was hunky-dory. My depression lifted and um, all was wonderful. Until March 2020, when of course the pandemic struck. And this kind of snookered my activities and um, it tested our relationship. We each of us said things we wished we hadn't said. My faith wavered. I started to question things that I saw um, in the Bible, the stories, the accounts. But during this time, one word kept turning up when I was reading my Bible notes, when I was watching, um, we watched Church Without Walls, uh, a Christian program on television, the word priorities and I then soon after that uh, kept coming like a message from God I called out to God where are you you've brought us together all was well now what I resolved to change and make Chris a priority more of a priority than I had been doing and that conscious decision, like a eureka moment, did make a big difference. The clouds did lift. And since then, I think our relationship has got stronger. And almost like God gave me depression to get me stronger and less selfish. Back to our readings. Two words, two key words I think I would like to dwell upon. The first one is joy. Paul had no right to be joyful, but he was. He was in prison or house arrest, waiting the outcome of his trial. He had no right to be joyful, but he was. The emperor at the time was Nero a man renowned for his cruelty and violence. Paul had no right to be joyful, but he was. And Paul not only chose to rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice, he implored the people at Philippi to do the same. That was over 2,000 years ago. Four days ago, I was at a memorial service for a man called Peter Kilgore at St. Paul's Church. He had no right to be joyful in his life. He was a 70-year-old man, quite severely disabled with MS. But he had a persona of joy. His smile and the twinkle in his eye, they were referred to time and again at this service on Wednesday. In fact, I've left the uh, 
details of the service out there on the table, you may care to look. His smile pervades the whole of the quite long um, order of service. Our own situation might seem bleak, but Jesus has guaranteed us our future. Christ, who walked out or left the tomb, will return to raise his followers. Joy, we need to have joy in our life, even when things are tough. The other word I want to dwell upon is thanksgiving. Giving thanks has a way of changing how we look at life. Giving thanks can make us happier. There's been research into this. The Bible has long established the benefits of giving thanks to God. Doing so reminds us of his character. The Psalms are repeatedly calling God's people to give him thanks because the Lord is good. His love endures forever. He is our rock in times of trouble. We have that song too, we should give thanks with a grateful heart. As believers in Jesus, we can always look to God for help and encouragement when we feel overburdened, desperate, running out, running on empty. He will not grow tired. He will give us strength. He knows there'll be days when we're low and unable to perhaps cope. Even the Pope, I guess, or Archbishop Canterbury, they, they will have days when they, they need the strength of God. We should not try and sprint through life in our own strength. Which reminds me of another occasion in the church here, it was here 30 years ago, I again with the Youth Fellowship, and I was at a meeting with all young people in the area, led by Fred Kahn. You may have seen his name, because he was a hymn writer. From Dutch origin, he actually became um, moderator of the West Midlands province. He said something which has stood with me for 30 years. He said, the minute that you think you have got no problems, that you can cope, that's the beginning of having real problems. We must use the strength that God will give us. The suffering experienced on this side of eternity may cause lots of anguish but our hope should remain anchored that word we sung earlier to our heavenly dwelling we can rejoice in the peace of his constant presence perhaps today perhaps soon or perhaps recent days we felt weak spiritually I think we need to nurture and to build a foundation of regular worship, regular dialogue, prayer with God. When facing issues that are troubling us, hoy, hang on in. Develop a persona of joy and peace. Be thankful for the many blessings that we have received. As it said in our reading, be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. The peace of God will guard our mind from acting impulsively acting selfishly, maliciously, we will be able to retain 
this persona of joy, peace, and thanksgiving, and that will surely strengthen our relationship with Almighty God. We're now going to sing again. We're going to sing. Ooh, I've jumped over. We're going to have the offertory. Sorry, no, no. We're <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we're, as you've in play, are you happy to wave? Yes. Sorry, I've jumped the gun slightly. Um, we're going to have our offertory um, for God's work in the world. Thank you. We shall now sing our next song, Beautiful Saviour, and there are some beautiful words here. I would encourage you to dwell upon those words as you sing them. Beautiful Saviour.
please be seated as we have our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Loving God, hear our prayer for the have-nots of this world. Those who have no homes, living rough on our streets. Those who have no food, their crops having failed, their economies burdened by debt, their labours not fairly rewarded. Those who have no fresh water, daily facing the threat of disease and the nightmare of drought. Those whose lives and livelihoods have been destroyed by natural disasters, flooding, earthquakes, landslides and extreme weather. Those who have insufficient resources to help themselves, condemned to a life of poverty with no prospect of respite. Those who have no access to education, the health service or welfare system, no one to turn to, to for help or support. Loving God, Stir the hearts of all to work for a fairer world and a more just society. Challenge all who have plenty to respond to those who have so little, so that all may share in the riches of your creation and be able to celebrate your gift of life. Lord of all, hear us now as we pray for victims of war. We pray for all those across the world who bear the scars of conflict, the injured, the maimed, the mentally distressed, those who've lost loved ones, their lives blighted by the horrors of war. We pray for those left homeless or as refugees, lost their livelihoods and security, and those who live in daily fear of their lives. We pray for children who've been orphaned, for parents who mourn their children, and countless families whose lives have been destroyed and will never be the same. Loving God, grant that the time will come when divisions will be overcome, evil, evil conquered and hatred ended, a day when people everywhere will live in harmony and enjoy lasting peace. Inspire all to work towards that goal. Lord Jesus Christ, you brought hope, comfort and renewal, peace, healing and wholeness. So we bring before you the sick and the suffering in our world, we pray for those afflicted in body, who's those in pain undergoing treatment, wrestling with disease. We pray for those disturbed or troubled in mind, whose confidence has been crushed and unable to cope with the pressures of daily life, the fearful, the anxious and the depressed. We pray for those afflicted in spirit who feel their lives to be empty, whose beliefs are threatened or who have lost their faith. Living God, reach out to all who work to bring wholeness and healing. Grant them wisdom and guidance, strength and support, and the ability to minister something of your care and compassion for all. Lord Jesus Christ, we know that God hears our prayers, and in this troubled world, we bring our prayers and our needs of faith before him, assured that he longs to meet our need. And in your name we ask it. Amen. We will now sing our final hymn, Go Forth and Tell.
just before coming up to church this morning, um, I had a bit of time, I was well ahead of the game, and I picked up this book here, which I picked up in America in 1970, the only year I've been there. It's called Cheer Up. And I just happened to come across, so this is only two hours ago, this um, little poem. It's entitled Worry. What ploughs deep wrinkles in the face? What robs of beauty and of grace? What makes grey age come on apace? Tis worry. What weighs us down with loads of care? What wraps in gloom this earth so fair? What ends too often in dark despair? Tis worry. What chases kindly sleep away? Makes labour bitter all the day and banishes each cheering ray? Tis worry. What paints the future dark and drear? Makes phantom foes seem real and near and racks us with tormenting fear tis worry what fills the mind with gloomy doubt what crowds our faith in heaven out what puts the soul to utter rout tis worry oh why then should we anxious be? Does God not care for you and me? Just trust him and he'll set us free from worry. Shall we close ourselves by standing and sharing the grace with each other? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Spirit.